Fuck yeah, everybody. Wow, there's a big crowd here. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Bunch of perverts here for little Esther, right? Happy, uh, no, they're not here. Come on, Brian. So don't creep everybody out. Give it just like three seconds, please. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday to you. How are you guys doing? Great. Glad to be here, guys. Another fun Monday. Brian, you're drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon. Is that a new sponsor of ours? Uh, it is. It's my new Gatorade to uh, go down with this uh, Patron. It's, oh, that's uh, it's like okay. my water. It's like my chaser. Every week, Kill Tony becomes a little bit more like dysentery. Brian's <laughs> other podcasts where he just uh, I drink early sexually now. harasses people and gets drunk. Yeah, I just drink early now. Drink I early. I stop early, but drink early. Interesting. How's that working out for you? Way better. Because, like, drinking at this place at 1 in the morning and you're trying to drink, that's just depressing. So I thought, hey, get the oh. drinking done early, then maybe go eat. That's fun. Oh, I see. So yeah. changing the schedule completely. Changing the it's schedule very around. exciting. Yeah. Late dinner. Um, it was a fun, uh, fun weekend. We had fun. I went to a Dodgers game yesterday. Anybody been to a Dodgers game before? Huh? Yeah. It's interesting. I just sort went to my dangerous. first one. Really? Wednesday, I went to my first. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Look at look at us. Yeah. Um, Did you eat a dog? I had a, a yeah. I had a I had a veggie dog. A, I had veggie a Dodgers dog. veggie dog. What's a Dodgers it was veggie terrible. dog? Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it tasted like the ketchup and relish and mustard that I put all over it to hide the flavor of whatever was underneath. So you couldn't really. It was basically a ketchup relish mustard uh, dog. It's awful. Especially since I stopped eating the dog part in the middle and just started eating the bread around it that's what uh, that's what my life's like if you want a little glimpse in eating healthy that's what it is it's just bread and mustard and ketchup did you could you eat anything else could you have the garlic fries i had a lot of other things i had peanuts and i had cracker jacks and i don't care if i ever go back yeah it was bird feed exactly (laughs) Bird, birdie. bird feed. Little birdie Hinchcliffe. I know. You know, just chirping along, and uh, um, that was fun. A little bit dangerous. It's really creepy there. Yeah. The fans are outrageous. It, I felt like everybody was doing an impression of a scum bucket. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like at a Dodgers game. Like, you're the one that didn't get the memo, hey, be a piece of shit today. Um well, who, 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 who'd they play this weekend? The Pirates. The Pirates. So even the visiting team was a bunch of assholes. Uh, yeah, I, fucking... I got to see the Reds, and it was a Wednesday, so I think a lot of people, you know, it was pretty empty. And yeah. it, was, it was just chill. It was a uh, bring your kid, get a batting helmet day oh, when I shit. went. So there was uh, a lot of, uh, what's the word? Black La- Friday Latinos. Oh. Um, and <laughs> And now, normally, if you've ever been to a Dodgers game, you would know that there's a lot of Latinos at a Dodgers game anyway. Yeah. But on bring your child to Dodger Stadium, get a free batting helmet. Like there's, I was watching people scam this batting helmet station. That's the way I work, by the way. I spent about a half an hour just people watching on the inside stadium part of the game while the actual game was going on because I couldn't help but to just watch these different little scams to going on. You're watching pickpockets happen at Dodger really? Stadium. Oh, I was I was dialed into everything. Wow. Well, it was you, amazing. It, it bring, bring, I mean, they got a free pair. Of, they got clothing, so that's why right. you know you, they would bring their right. kids. Right, they brought there. all their kids. Yeah, so they could get a And let me tell you something else. I don't know if you guys know this, but Latinos definitely know how to make a baby. <laughs> so on, it, when the Latino baseball team has bring your kid to, I mean, yeah. they brought their kids. Yeah. And I got hats, and they, and it's and that's what I was thinking. Like, what do you even do with? Cause it's that chintzy batting helmet. So what do you do? Like, put what? Dip in it. That's another <laughs> thing that grossed me out. Like, is that they also serve a bunch of things in batting helmets? Yeah, it's the same helmet that they also use for the nachos there. Right. You can get like an eight dollar nachos at Dodger Stadium, oh, or you eight? can buy nachos in the batting helmet for fifteen dollars, yeah. which is fucking disgusting. Because then what? You put the helmet on <laughs> after nachos. That's the last thing you'd want to. That's the last helmet you'd want to wear. Is the I was formerly a nacho holder hat. <laughs> it's just a little bean. There you go. Uh, <laughs> keeping the momentum alive. Uh, guys, uh, I'm very excited. Oh, we're going to Comic Con in July, everybody. Oh, yeah. uh, so for all our listeners in San Diego. 
um, because this is a podcast, believe it or not, people. All this magic that you're seeing right now is not only a live show, but it's also a podcast. There's people listening right now wondering why I'm talking about them listening. Yeah. Um, and we're doing a Thunder Pussy also. We're doing yeah. a Kill Tony and then followed by a Thunder Pussy, which is the improv stand-up show. And San Diego yeah. is awesome, and it's going to be warm, and Comic-Con is fantastic, so we're excited to be part of it. It's going to be a great time. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but let's talk about today's Kill Tony, shall we? Yes. We always have a head of security that takes care of us, keeps an eye on us, keeps everybody in the room safe. It used to be uh, the Iron Patriot, um, and we had him for uh, many weeks, and then he quit on us. So we've been replacing with a new type of Patriot each week since then, just to show him how easily replaceable he was. <laughs> and... So tonight's is, this is his first, or no, it's his second time uh, defending our honor, and we're excited to have him back. It's the one and only, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Yes, it is. The Christian Patriot. Resurrected for your return. That microphone in front of the chair is going to be the magic, by the way. Oh, fuck yeah. The right hand of the Lord. The left hand's going dark. Oh, jeez. Well, why don't you just complain about it? I just... Um, <laughs> I'm used to much bigger crowds. Too. Let's, turn this <laughs> let's turn this wine into some uh, wine or something. Anyway, uh, Jesus, how you doing? Everything's good. Glad to be here. It's a good time for you. It's the okay. off-season. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas isn't for another six months. Things are bumping. You get to just chill, walk the streets of sunset. That's right. No, the, I, what I love is that the the every patriot wears those uh, gloves with the lights on them, but I yours actually like covers up the holes that were in your hands uh, before that, right? Oh, come on. They might they might be normal day jokes to you since you're Jesus Christ, but to us, I'm trying to make people laugh here. You don't need to want 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 me. How dare you, Jesus? There you go. Got one guy on the right over here. A lot of Jesus fans. That guy must be a good Christian, I'm guessing. Um, so, what else is going on, Jesus? How's everything? What What else? What's good? I'm here for the Thunder Pussy Show. <laughs> <laughs> what? Isn't this Thunder Pussy? It's not actually really p pussy at the Thunder Pussy Show. <laughs> Not? No. What's going on right now? I'm confused. He's, uh, he's like trying to chase tail. You were talking about baseball. I like baseball. Oh, really? Who, what's your favorite team? The, the Angels? Angels? Really? That's right. Wow. That's right. Come they on. Like dirty, they wear white. Fuck Not yeah. Float, to base. Do you ever go see them? Um, actually, I'm a big Dodger fan. And what, then, how often do you go to a game? I bet that must be insane, you going there. Because those Latinos, they try to find Jesus everywhere. They try to find Jesus in a fucking p p piece of toast. The actual Jesus showing up to a Dodger game, they must really freak out. And it must be really hard for them to keep their faith when the Dodgers lose 8-2 to two, uh, after you were there. Guys, what, are, what, are we, what is this, the church meetup group? Are you guys uh, <laughs> anti-Jesus jokes? All right. I guess we booked the wrong week. Um, fuck yeah. This is the great Kevin Lee Light, by the way, everybody. He uh, is on Twitter at Kevin Lee Light, a super awesome human being and spirit. We've been friends forever. We used to be neighbors. We I used to good. walk out of my apartment and you'd see Jesus watering his plants across the street. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, but I'd see Tony Hinchcliffe just strolling down the block, too. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, I had no idea what a, what a genius he was. Oh, thanks. Thank thanks. Jesus Christ, settle down. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. And uh, let's just keep it moving. You're two guests tonight. I always have two of my funniest friends come on. This is a really fun one because we've all been really good friends for many years. Put your hands together for these two awesome people. It's Benji Aflalo and Esther Pavitsky. Wow. Yay, two of my youngest looking friends, for sure. I didn't really realize that until I saw you guys walking up. Tony, Look like a couple little babies. I used to see Jesus, too, because we used to live together. I know, it's true. Guys, Esther and I dated five years ago. 
See that lack of applause right there? <laughs> exactly. It's almost like they know. Um, but that's true. We, uh, we signed a one-year lease at a place, and Stock Jesus is. was across the street from us. We were definitely, the grass was greener on the other side. Uh, Being around you guys when you were dating was awful. Why? Yeah. Because you were always fighting. It was like chaos, and I was trying to be friends with both of you, and it was just chaos. Didn't you watch him go down on me once in the phone's room? I did. All right, watch. guys. Uh, this isn't what I thought the opening conversation was going to be about. Sometimes when you tell them just to have fun and everything will be okay, you don't uh, get your point across as to let's not bring up that I, shitty I, part of five years ago. I was walking into the... I saw them. You saw them? No. I was walking into the comedy store phones room and the door was shut. Yeah. And I, th I think I knocked because I had a feeling. Oh, we're and doing sure this, enough, huh? I, uh, I came in and I didn't see anything, but the vibe was there. The air was heavy with. Well, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We I, were in oh, the yeah, no, no. Room. I mean, the vibe up there was just something sexual happening too. Oh, totally, ago. of course. As a born and bred nerd, I can always tell when I'm ruining sex for other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Also, just a quick uh, disclosure, Esther's body odor right now is at Benji. full steam. Really? <laughs> yeah. See, maybe oh, my just... God, it is. <laughs> you <laughs> like my body I, odor. Uh, I, uh, I used to like it. Uh, I, it's not my fault. Uh, it is your fault. You don't wear deodorant. <laughs> it's your fault. I took a shower two days ago. Yeah, with your dog. Are you serious? <laughs> she doesn't shower all the time, and if I go, what, when do you shower? Like every other day, and she goes, as needed. Yeah. Has it she really been two days? Yeah, Do you not enjoy a shower? It's no. one of my favorite parts of the day. First of all, I don't take showers. I take baths. And oh, it's... my God. She never takes showers. You just showers. sit in a bowl of yeah. Esther soup <laughs> <laughs> thinking, that, thinking that that's going to get rid of whatever filth you have. Like, you could still have bacteria on you from a year ago. <laughs> if, this, if you really haven't taken a shower where water goes off of you and into a drain, that's bad. It's like it's European. You should uh, you should sell little bottles of your tub <laughs> tub water to those crazy guys that jerk off to your podcast sometime. It actually is good. All the bacteria, like as cavemen, we were just our skin was covered in that bacteria that we don't have as much anymore. So, so right. Yeah, so maybe like there's probiotics. an argument there. Even even cavemen would go to different lakes to bathe. <laughs> <in there. laughs> she just keeps sitting in that same pot. I can't imagine what the ring around that oh, must look like. It's like it, Alpo. It's no. like sad. Pattern, just a fucking it. thick rotating <laughs> ring of rocks. It's working. Esther's half tropical fish is what we don't know. <laughs> you're like a, you're like the worst mermaid ever. But you have human legs. All right, guys, we've lost the audience at some point. I thought it was uh, funny the conversation about your bathing. Maybe not. I still love Oh, I'm just kidding. Big reveal. <laughs> Jesus, when we lived across the street from you, did you ever see us arguing? Did I ever talk with you about it being tough times, being a, uh, no. two years into the comedy game and being in a relationship with a girl that wouldn't let you leave the All right, her side stop. for more than 20 minutes? Stop. <laughs> I'm needy, okay? I'm, oh, we all know what I am. You're definitely, you're, you're needy of a shower is what you're needy of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kicking in here right now. Um, Tony moved into his car to move out of the apartment with Esther. All right. It's true. As, since, since, we, since it is brought up, and this was not my intention, but I will tell you the icing on the cake is that this is true. I did live in my car while trying to figure out yeah, and save for the after that. And people always ask me, they go, hey, man, that's so crazy. I heard that like you lived in your car for a while like when you were struck. And it was the happiest time of my life How was living in this I car. How do you feel knowing that a man would rather live in a car than live with me? <laughs> but you knew what you were doing, you okay. poor little thing. It was so sad. I didn't want to be all the right, one that right, had to all right, all right, all house right, right. break it's you. Not, stop, let's stop. Let's not go there. Okay. No, I mean, I mean, this isn't like a relationship podcast or anything, and it's exactly what I was hoping wouldn't happen when I decided <laughs> to have you on the show. But uh, thank you, Benji, for opening up the floodgates, and then and then going back to the phone room story after I said that. Uh, anyway, guys, the point is, is that we've all been friends for a really long time, it's and, true. Uh, There's and a it's lot very of exciting. Here the yeah. Four of us. Yeah. Totally. We're all friends. Yeah, Absolutely. I used to have sex with Esther after Tony. Oh, my Tony. God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I went through a I got a Tony's phase. leftovers. You guys, I'm a... It's true. And I've been her friend the whole time. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Just dealing with all the garbage. 
You tried yeah. to have sex with me one time. One and a half times. It didn't work. I didn't try to kiss her. I just mounted her. <laughs> <laughs> and you still didn't get it? What happened? Uh, we just knew we shouldn't have sex, and then she was... I rejected you. So strongly. Uh, I guess. And you said that the only reason you had sex with me is because you had Thai food goggles. I ate a lot of Thai food. I wasn't thinking clearly. And then eventually I was like, okay, I'm going to the bathroom to jerk off. And then she's like, all right, let me see your dick. I showed her my dick. That's and she's not, like, it is. And then she goes, okay, go to the bathroom and jerk off. That's <laughs> exactly what happened. That was not oh. the time I saw your dick, but whatever. Oh, okay, well, what was your time that you saw this dick? No, this is exciting. Let's move on to the open micers. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> First of all, what? you don't call people open micers. That's you, disrespectful. That's what you do all They're the time. They're comedians. Oh, I... But the comedians. They I, might just be getting their start, but open micer has a bad stigma to it. But no, it's it okay. doesn't. It absolutely does not. Okay, you're right. <laughs> um, I uh, didn't mean that in a mean way. I just love the fact that Benji showed you his penis and it was so sad looking that you're like, nah, go ahead, jerk off. No, she was Great. impressed. I did good. She said oh, your wow. penis is bigger, but mine's still fine. What? Well, of course my penis is bigger. Um, you know, let's just put it this way. I used to fill Esther up like a bathtub. Oh, my God. Uh, I need, this is, that's a callback, guys. Those of you that are applauding are going to have fun here tonight. The Those of you not crossed. applauding are a little I bit stiff. I do not stiff. let people come inside me. That was a cross line. No, that's not what filling up. Esther, just... Stay pop. Everything's okay. <laughs> just, just because I said just fill stop, you up like it doesn't stop. mean that I came inside of you. Right. Just relax. Just so defensive. Puck doesn't count. Yeah, it's true. You guys, I'm a nice girl from <laughs> Illinois. Aww. Kind of. I don't know. And I remember watching you start stand up, and I remember true. when Benji first got here, and we've had so much fun. So let's watch people do comedy. Are you guys ready for Kill Tony 53? <laughs> Many comedians have signed up to fill up this bucket for the chance to do one minute. You know that you're... All right, everybody, settle down. Save it. Save your energy. What was that? Guys, you know that your 60 seconds is up when you hear the meow of a kitty. Aw, how cute. You better wrap it up after that or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. All right, very good. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting bear. What was that? <laughs> that was a gay bear. Oh, well, that would be the West Hollywood bear, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's finally all coming together. 53 episodes in, it's finally starting to sound like a gay bear. Uh, all right, <laughs> so uh, let's do it, shall we? Here we go. Your first comedian tonight. There's still a battery in this, Josh. Why do you keep the battery in this bucket for no reason? All right, doesn't matter. Hey, I know that this girl's been signing up for a while, and uh, the, due to the formalities of the bucket, some people don't get up for a while, and it gets annoying uh, because I really like this chick. Super cool, super funny. It's Clee Wiggins, everybody. Working out a minute on Kill Tony. From the deepest corner. This mic is not on. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I thought it was on. Um, so actually, like, since you guys live together, uh, I actually moved in with my boyfriend about a year ago. And the um, thing is, like, uh, we're both, like, black nerds, uh, the two of us. And we live next to these, like, white hippie neighbors. And I don't think they realize who exactly they're living next door to. Because uh, in the year that we've lived together, we've had the cops calling us three times because of our arguments. And it's because, really, we, we still argue like niggas, really. <laughs> like, in that we call each other all kind of niggas and motherfuckers in, in our arguments, but what we argue about is super nerdy. <laughs> like the first time the cops ever got called, um, it was an argument ab about how to best reboot Buck Rogers. <laughs> and uh, the cops get there and they, they separate us and they, you know, they take me in the other room and of course he's um, handcuffed and sitting in the computer chair. Um, <laughs> but the cop was like, you know, ma'am, can you tell me what happened? I'm like, oh, you know what this motherfucker had the nerve to tell me? He said if you reboot Buck Rogers, you don't need Twinkie. Who the fuck is going to carry Dr. Theopolis if you don't have Twinkie? That's, I mean, yeah, 
think. I don't know Buck Rogers, but I like what's going on there. I like the uh, I like that premise because I know how yeah. true it is. I know you and Ed, and uh, if you don't know uh, Clee and her uh, also hilarious boyfriend Ed Greer do a oh. segment here every Sunday night uh, where they go on stage together and they talk about their week, uh, what happened this week of them living together, and they, then they answer questions. Super funny. Totally worth checking out on a Sunday night. Clee and Ed the Ed Clee show, eleven thirty Sunday. There you go. Boom. 11.30. Um, and they are black nerds, and that's funny. That uh, I, love that you're, I love that you're keeping it real. I just don't know Buck Rogers, so I don't know how hard well, that reference will Yeah, that's will hit. super nerdy. You could kind well, of like, like dumb it down for like us. I do sometimes. I, I uh, do, because actually the actual first fight was about Batman. So, but I prefer the Buck Rogers What one. was the argument? What was the Batman Oh, uh, he... He's a huge like DC fan and loves Batman as his favorite character, uh, but he hates the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Um, and I really only like The Dark Knight, but we, it's a big argument about how he really sorts of rants about how they suck because like Batman goes out in the afternoon too often and dressed as Batman. Like, he's the Dark Knight; he doesn't go out at 2 p.m. That's bullshit. Sure. <laughs> so, and uh, how he you know see so hates them and and I, I sort of defend like well like you know you know. How people try to defend them, like you, atmospherically, you know, whatever. What would how how do you defend Christopher Nolan? Well, I mean, Batman? I think I think it's just like I like what he did, with, like with the tone and, and the way he tried to tell the story. I think he uh, he fucked it way up with Dark Knight Rises, but Batman Begins and Dark Knight are pretty good as yeah. far as there's a lot there's a lot of afternoon Batman in Dark in uh, Dark Knight Rises. Though. It's terrible. Just to prove to you how big of a nerd she is, everybody, there was that. I got so, it and, out like, of her. Yeah, part of the reason why I told that joke. Just now, though, besides like you guys referencing living together, is that the last time I was on here, Bobby Lee said I should do that. So I was like, oh, totally. I had a whole big plan of doing it and hopefully getting up quicker, and it was like a month and a half. Ago, I so. agree, and and the reason why I asked about the Batman thing specifically, and I think that that could be an easy transition in, is a, it's real. You said that was the first argument, and b, people can relate to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, everybody's seen the last few Batman, so. But you can even make it three that Nolan did or two. She can even make it more general than that, though. You you can make it something just as generic as Superman versus Spider Man, and just find a way. I mean, I sometimes I switch it up, or I do the fight of the week if we've had like super nerdy argument of that week. Sometimes I'll just do that one, Um, you know. But sometimes I'll reference the actual three arguments that did turn into like door slamming. And it also (laughs) and I and I (laughs) and I think if there's a way to. Contrast the two things because it's also, it's also the arguments are what was the word, not black but niggas. Oh, okay. I do like I well sometimes I'll say they're very like Tyler Perry. Why did I get married? (laughs) Right. So I think they're like very like sort of like they do descend sometimes into very cliche like Jeffersons esque. (laughs) As black as black nerds, you get more nervous around the cops or the Geek Squad. Um, joke, guys. <laughs> Just throwing out jokes. <laughs> neither, really, because like we're just like non-threatening enough as black people that the cops don't really mm-hmm. like mess with us. If we're, we're just that side of Bryant Gumble, and then you know, but we're also, <laughs> but also you know, but Geek Squad also is like you're not they're there to help. Us. Yeah, right. Have the cops actually come to your yeah three yeah. times? Oh. And it was it just an argument about? And it was always pizza? arguments, and it was always uh, the neighbor next door. And then actually a couple months ago, I finally like talked to the because it's a couple that lives next to us also, and there are these like white hipster hippie chick dude. Are they uh, hippies uh, or hipsters? Is it different? Uh, the girl is a hipster, and the dude is a hippie. Ugh. So what? So they're probably both hipsters. And, the, and he's the one who's called the cops on us all three times. Cause I got the chance to talk to the girl, and like, and she's like, I'm not the one because um, I understand like your arguments don't sound that bad to me, but my boyfriend doesn't like it. He thinks it's very sounds very dangerous. I'm like, don't you don't need to call the cops on this. I'm never in danger. The blacks are fighting. Burn sage. <laughs> right. and I think he just he thinks because they they get real. I don't know. They've gotten very. I guess if you would only could hear it, and they can't hear everything we're saying. Like then, like obviously when somebody swears or something, they also all they hear is motherfucker, nigga. Like right. <laughs> all right, but wait, wait, are we talking fight once a day, once a week, once a month, or I'd once? Say maybe twice a month. Twice a month. And, yeah. like, screaming matches. Yeah, they do sometimes descend into screaming matches. Well, we get nerdy, very... nerdy screaming matches. Are sometimes like, we the get book is, really... The book um, was better than the movie. Yeah, like, and it's... I mean, it's... Like, when it gets that bad, that was rare. Like, the three times it's happened, it's been, like, that bad. Where most of the time it'll just be, like, 
you know, we'll just be cutting each other off and not listening. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Walk up to your white neighbors and be like, we fuck loud. That's all you're We hearing. do also fuck loud, though. That's the Maybe they resent that. I don't know. We try to keep it early in the it's morning. probably that. Those hippies, they sit Indian style. No, they fuck in their living room with the, with the windows open. So, like, they're getting everybody else just, like, if we fuck loud. Like, they, they fuck in their living room with the windows open. I don't, oh, I don't get so that Oh, so creepy. That's when I walk by and I'm just like, they're fucking on the couch again with the windows open. When nerdy room. blacks fuck instead of knocking boots, it's knocking toms. All right, guys. I, <laughs> I think you guys both decided to put in your 10 cents at the same time there. Uh... <laughs> You guys were both really ramping up for something. Yeah. Brian with the sound effect, Benji with the joke, and you guys just canceled yeah. each other out big time. Big time. I mean, that was just the epitome of probably great jokes, but that's it, the bad timing. That's what that's called. Knocking toms. So what did I you say? I said because they're black nerds, instead of knocking boots, they're knocking toms. Toms is like a nerdy. No, we still shoe. dress like black people too. <laughs> but right. well, I feel like I, I feel like I want to know more about what like a black nerd is and does. Like that's that's yeah. like a, a oh, an open yeah, market. I mean, I have interacting with regular white nerds, interacting with regular blacks. <laughs> yeah, like, like what's that yes. like? Do black nerds like different things than white nerds? No. Do they I mean, drink from separate water fountains? Yes. <laughs> Growing up black nerd, you know, what's that like? For Ed, it was hard for me. It wasn't that bad because I grew up in San Francisco. But he grew up right. in Kansas City, so. Pretty black. It was very difficult for him. Is the music you listen to nerdy, too? No, I listen to very misogynistic rap and a lot of 80s hair, like hair metal. Right. <laughs> and 80s hair weird. metal? Yeah. Maybe you're like not Like Motley Crue. I've seen Motley Crue in concert like four times. Do they make you sit in the back row? <laughs> oh, no, they love. Well, <laughs> that's funny. Good. That is very funny. But no. So like misogynistic rap. So like you'll listen. Like to, I like E40. I like Rick Ross. So you'll like, listen to the game, and then you'll also listen to a Magic the Gathering podcast. I'm not really into Magic the Gathering. I do like D and D. You're missing out. D and D, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Yeah. And you Never really got into Magic the, the Gathering. It came out when I was a little too old to be. There's one guy in the back of the room playing Dungeons and Dragons by himself <laughs> right now. I played. I played Dungeons and. Yeah, I played with solitaire. Scott Kidd before. I actually, me and Ed played with Scott Kidd recently. Oh shit! What the was red that box. Like? It was fun. Yeah. Huh? The red box, the original box. Yeah, no, I think we played the newest version actually. And like the reason I got into D and D is my mom. My mom was like used to force me and my brother to play D and D. <laughs> my mom's a nerd also. That's awesome. She, she's a video game nerd. I'm a sci-fi nerd, and Ed's a comic book nerd. Does your asthma inhaler have bling on it? I've never had. <laughs> More black nerd jokes. Guys. Never had asthma. <laughs> These I'm, are uh, great. I was, an athlete, I was an athlete in school. I played. Benji's a machine. He would yeah. sit here yeah, all day got, and just chipping a, away. Got, I've got a million of them. <laughs> you know, the first time I met you and uh, Esther, Tony, was you guys were fighting on the patio at Red Rock. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Amy Hawthorne was like, oh, you should meet, you should meet uh, Tony and uh, Esther. And it was like, wait, like, I think you guys were like breaking up or okay, maybe getting back together, breaking up, right as me and Ed were first dating. Wow. And oh so he was like, and then you guys, she's like, come over. And then like, as, we, as soon as we stepped over there, like, it was clear you guys were having an argument. It was yeah. hilarious. It like, was on that upper floor yeah, that upper patio. Floor, yeah. yeah, I was probably about to I jump off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was it's a dark time. Up here. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Also, uh, so uh, uh, Kevin, um, you know, the Giants are up seven games over the Dodgers, so Dodgers can suck it. So... <laughs> Boom. You just Boom. got burnt. I just burned Jesus over baseball. <laughs> Whoa, there you go. Look who was on it on that one. All right. Okie dokie. Um, Clee, you're awesome. Thank you, Johnny. I would definitely keep chipping away at the types of things that Benji is floating out there, those little mm -hmm. things that are filler. Also, I would make a bigger Bryant Gumbel type of joke. Like, I think there's something so funny about Bryant Gumbel that mm -hmm. you could... Yeah. Add it into That's like, what I kind of say, like me and it. Are, it seems like Brian Gumbel would just would fit good. right into, right? Maybe that. Maybe that's it. If you, yeah. if you and your, uh, it'd be a baby Brian Gumbel. If you guys had a baby, something probably you'll it would figure, end up being Brian Gumbel. Out. But I, I, don't, I don't. Yeah. I think she should just like corner the black nerd market as hard as possible because that's something. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, I mean, that's sort of like a a uh, thing, you know. I mean, it's, I guess black nerds are hot now with Hannibal Burris and Aisha all, Tyler. All, yeah. and all those. It's it's cool to be a nerd right now. I, well, yeah, it's been it's been fun for my whole life too. Yeah, <laughs> I Aww. was cool. I was a cool nerd. Though. I was a jock, and I didn't have the typical nerd experience. That, that was my. That's why I have confidence now. 
I used to make fun of kids titties. so bad. I remember one kid in school had a, a, a nose that was filled with dried boogers, and I would just destroy him. Every single day he had dried boogers in his nose. That's adorable. You're such a jerk. Or, you know, he was just doing a ton of blow every night and then not... Yeah, no, this was grade school. These were real. These, were, these boogers were from God. Did he eat them? What? Did he eat them? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that. I Clee Wiggins, you. thank you so much. That thank was you, awesome. Thank you, Brian. Follow her on Twitter at Clee the Pimp, K L E E, the Pimp, all one word, Clee Wiggins. Hell yeah. How's that Slurpee? It's a good evening snack. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, guys, uh, no better time to eat at McDonald's than now. Uh, double cheeseburgers are 99 cents, and uh, the summer... Isn't there a happy hour? Buy one uh, smoothie, get one free. I think between that was with three and five, if I remember the billboard correctly. There you go. McDonald's, I'm loving it. So uh, one of our favorite sponsors, McDonald's. You're not, you're not, you're joking. Who, me or him? What do you what do you think? <laughs> Some people I, do ask me. It's pretty funny. Yeah, you're gonna get sued. You're you're gonna get us all in trouble for this. Yeah, thing. you can't get sued <laughs> by not making money. Yeah, that's true. They can't go. <laughs> it's not like McDonald's is losing eaters because I'm saying go eat the food, <laughs> even I'm though it's. I mean, and it is a joke because obviously they don't really sponsor us. But oh, okay. I love weekly. I I I, I push them. Just Jesus. for a moment. It's funny because you're a vegan, so you're almost like, please kill yourself, everybody. Right. I'm eating healthy, but I encourage yeah. you to be a fat idiot. And the fact that their trademark is, I'm loving it, and most people know that I would never eat McDonald's and you know, at all. I don't even go near that type of garbage. I mean, the closest I came in the past year was that veggie dog I have of at Dodger <laughs> Stadium. And I was th every bite, I'm thinking about how gross it is, and I'm thinking about the process of how even a veggie dog gross yeah or, or disgusting. maybe the gas station long john silvers we had in uh, uh that was Houston. bad <laughs> that was bad <laughs> that was bad if you guys yeah. are on the road doing texas ever and you're between cities where like you have to drive four hours from like austin to dallas I, i'm pretty sure that's yeah. exactly what it was and you're halfway there and you're starving and you've been waiting past exits that have a lot of things and there's just one exit and it's a Long John Silver's connected with the gas station. You go, I want to eat there because then we'll have a funny thing to say about it. That's a bad, bad decision. Yeah. Truly bad decision. That was the thing that caused that yeah. terrible stuff that night. We didn't actually get ro roofied. We, we might have. We got really sick. Did I was get sick. The yeah, but when you get food poisoning, you don't forget parts of your night like five hours of our night is gone i black out from pizza and you, i get a hangover pizza you, hangover you black out yeah fuck yeah <laughs> what, what kind of pizza do you uh what kind of pizza do you like gluten-free cheese pizza gluten-free cheese pizza yeah where do you get it from if anyone wants to take me on a date she, she might black out <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> Yeah, you're an easy date rape, just carbs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, who's next? <laughs> Your next comedian goes by the name of Sayri. Here she comes. Sayri. How you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah. Um, I just realized there's three words every undercover lesbian know. Like, yeah, I'm about to go there tonight, right? Like, I was hanging out with my friend, my good friend. She used to always try and get me drunk. She's like, Sarai, you're drunk. Spend the night, Sarai, you're drunk. I was like, oh, uh, bitch, I had one beer. And she was like, no, you messed up. Spend the night, right? So I said, one night I said, get the sofa ready for me. I'll sleep on the sofa, okay? And then she was like, no, sleep in the bed with me. And that's when I heard those three words. She was like, we're both girls. Sleep in the bed with me, we're both girls. I woke up in the middle of the night with like fingers in my hoo meow. You know my meow? And you know, after I came, guys, um, <laughs> you know, after, and like ever since then, I haven't been all the way straight. You know, like the other day, my friend was breastfeeding and I got a little turned on. You know, like I looked at the baby, I was like, share the milk! Share the milk! All right, thanks, guys. 
Hell yeah. You were almost going to drink breast milk there at the end of that. Interesting. Um, I would say get to it a little bit faster. Like the actual meat and potatoes of it is that, uh, you know, she fingered you. And you liked it. And you liked it. Um, but everything after that part is pretty funny and beat it out. I just get to it faster. Like, you know, the, a lot of you don't know how, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you how lesbianism started with me is bobbity bob. And like, you're just right in on, you, when, it's when you're, when your friend that is a lesbian watches you have one beer and tells you you're too drunk, instead of like selling it and going back and forth with those characters for no reason, because you're going doing her and then you say Sarai, right? Yeah, Sarai. Sarai, you're drunk and you're like all that, and there's really not much there. So you can just skip all that, get right to the fingering, and then you're in and banging. Start, start with the fingering, gotcha. Right. Make it, make it sound like you're talking to a friend about it, not. Like, like, if you were telling me, like, hey, last night I slept in this bed and, and, and you told it to me like it really happened, I think it would be a hundred times more funny because I'm going to believe it. Like, you're kind of doing, like, a cartoon character up there when you were doing, like, I, I like what you were saying, but I kind of felt like you weren't being serious. You, yeah, you felt like a little scripted. Yeah, yeah. Like, like an I'm actress. Get it the minute, no, that's like, okay. Oh, so yeah. you only have a minute. But you yeah. have oh amazingly God. high cheekbones. Yeah. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful. Is that a, Indian side, Native American. Is that a true story? Did that really happen to you? That is true. And are you now partially lesbian? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> Did she little, make... Little, wow, little, she you know? turned you. Look at that. See, that's like, so, like, in, that's so like, interesting. I'm see, like rehab. You know, like if I see a certain girl, I might relapse, you know. But right now, I'm straight. I'm fine. See, that's more real. How you're talking right now is 100% yeah. more real. Yeah. And, I, and it would make that story so much more interesting and funny. Yeah. yeah, just being loose and just doing open mics and being loose. And fighting your own homosexuality is something we can all relate to, right? Right? Yeah. Benji, for sure. Jesus. How do you, uh, like, have you, uh, have you fantasized about hooking up with her again? Uh, no. That was years ago. That was college. That was, like, my freshman year in college. Wow. So she's thrown you off the straight pedestal ever, ever, since. Since. ever since. No, I mean, I'm okay. Like, I'll date, you know, guys mostly, but, you know, mostly, uh. you know, but, I don't know. It's still something that's a little weird about me. So that's not Have, weird. Just yeah, liking that's just, women. Yeah, that's, that's just being weird. bisexual. But, it's yeah. normal. Is that your go-to masturbation uh, memory, though? Yeah, every now and then I'll just yeah. imagine her just nude, and I'll just go. No, I'm just joking. No, not at all. Ever? Her at all. That but night? sometimes, like, I'll have really close friendships with women, and I'm like, oh shoot, do I like her as a friend, or is it like kind of borderline? You know? Have you oh. hooked up with chicks since this girl in college? I plead the fit. <laughs> that's a yes. Yeah, I, yeah, that's it's a yes. not. Don't be you know what she's yeah, doing? You shouldn't be ashamed. No, it's... she's she wants the shame because it makes the lesbian action more hot if she feels wrong. <laughs> if she feels wrong. Oh yeah. Oh you're. Oh you're bad. <laughs> oh you girl. shouldn't do that. Oh man, that would be terrible. You come harder if it makes you feel dirty. Yeah, well, that's true for everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, give her a taste. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, my uh, God. that's that's why everybody likes banging Esther. It makes them feel dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing dirtier than the chick that showers when she needs to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, yeah, that's exciting. Uh, you know, uh, do you come from a Christian background? I do. Like right. my, I have my. My dad is a preacher, my grandpa's oh. a preacher, and my uncle's a preacher. So Jesus, Whoa. what do you what do you think about yeah. her adventuring into the depths of vagina? <laughs> West Hollywood Gay Pride Festival, of June sixth through eighth. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. I'll write that down. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's the best place to Gay stick Pride. a finger in. So your parents will kill you if you if your preacher family would be upset if you were a lesbian. Uh, maybe not kill me, but they would probably be really disappointed. Do they probably. have internet? Um, no. No, my dad doesn't know. Is your dad one of those cool black preachers that like... No, he... No, not really. Not really. He's... I mean, he's a very loving guy, but, I mean, I'm like his only daughter out of like eight... Out of eight boys. So, are, like, all the pressure's on me to produce. I don't know what that means. Are they kind of suspicious when considering you're not a single black mother? Uh, maybe. Maybe a little. I don't know. Yeah. Do they really... Yeah, that's, that's maybe a sign for that. Right? So you have how many brothers? I have uh, eight brothers. Wow. You're the only, only girl. Only girl. Oh, what a nightmare. Yeah. Wow. No, I couldn't get a date in high school anyways. Not to make the typical gay joke, but you guys are all now a softball team with all nine of you. So. Oh, there you go. So the reason why your parents would be upset is because you would end the family 
line oh, if you went well, full. Well, the, the boys, the boys the can have yeah. babies. Oh, yeah, that's the right. What am I thinking? I, I won't even get the name. <laughs> For some anyway, reason, so. I forgot about that part. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, r actually, my, my <sighs> name is Venice Sarai. Sarai is actually my last name. So I go by Sarai. To What's your be first name? Big Venice. Lesbian? Yeah, that's Come too. on, people. I that's had to throw nickname. it out there. No, but... Just no. be a lesbian if you're a lesbian, or be bisexual. You only She's live once. Bisexual. And let us all watch. Just let it all, yeah. Got it. You're right. only getting older. You can get all star pussy right now. It's only <laughs> the lesbian pussy you're gonna take home is only getting worse. <laughs> so you might as well play the market. It's are true. Any, are any of your brothers lesbian? <laughs> Not that I know, but it's one brother that's a little. Uh, a little iffy. A little iffy. <laughs> you know that guy's in in his in, when there when his family's not around. I'll bet you he's not a little iffy. What at all? At all? Like he's, he's just iffy. balls deep into guys' assholes. By the way, let me just promise you: if you think he's a little iffy, yeah. he is just dicks all over his face. Everything's in his butt, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that it's funny when a relative says, "Oh, one brother, he's a little iffy." It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> we know. <laughs> If he's showing you a little iffy, like if, he, if if the stuff that you see, like at Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, when he's like jerking off the turkey leg oh or, you know, like, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be that. But if you think he's a little iffy, that cracks me up, right? You just yeah, know he's, he's like a personal trainer. He's always oiled up and well, that'll never be great. Really what if you girlfriend. take Jesus's advice and you go to the gay parade, you might run into your brother on one of the floats. Awesome. All right, I lost everybody on that one. Um, <laughs> But that's uh that's fun stuff. I definitely get to the fingering and uh and uh fire off more after that, you know. And it's most compelling when you talk about the interior battle of is it right and wrong with your dad as a preacher and seven brothers. If you get all that in there because it's so real anyway, you'll be able to come up with more stuff and there'll be new parts of that entire truth thing that's built and it'll make you feel good every time you talk about it cuz were you, therapeutic. were you baptized in a church or a, like a pond? Uh, church. Church. <laughs> what kind of question <laughs> is that? <laughs> you really went for it with that one, buddy. <laughs> Classic red <laughs> Were you baptized in a pond? I was just imagining like this old school church where she was in the back with her brothers and they all had white shirts on and they you know, Oh my god. Getting their shirts all wet. I love it. <laughs> Sarai, thank you so right, much. No problem. Very cool. Nice very funny. Right. She's on Twitter at I am Sarai. That's S A Y R I E. S A Y R I E. Oh, lesbians are fun. What a, what an interesting breed. She's the cheery lesbian too, not the like angry lesbian. Yeah. Love me a cheery lesbian. <laughs> lesbians are most fun when they're being lesbians, you know. Nope. Nope. Scissoring is one of the funniest things That's I've ever myth. seen in my entire life. It's not a myth. It's you know, a myth. It, they don't like it. It doesn't feel good. I, I feel it, like then they're bad at it. For them. I feel like there's lesbians out there with skills who can scissor You can really do well. it if the do girl has scissor? extended lips and if you match it up right, sure, That's you can probably saying. do it. But most of the time, it's just m way more work than it's, you know, pleasure for. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking some CrossFit dykes who can fucking scissor. Yeah, yeah I've talked they to lesbians the angles, that actually scissor before from on stage, but they were agreeing with me. That, but these are like, these aren't like, you know, little baby Hollywood lesbians like you're probably used to. Yeah, like these are these yeah. are bull dykes that are visiting from fucking yeah, Missouri got, that have shorter hair than me. They have huge pussy lips that are probably rough like an elbow, so that's why they, they have fun with it. I'm just saying, I'm not saying scissoring's hot. I'm saying scissoring is comedically one of the funniest things I could watch. It's like watching people fall and... <laughs> You know, it's up there with like farting or falling out of a chair. Like scissoring's amazing. I used to think it was hot. Now the only scissoring I ever get to see is Josh cutting these pieces of paper uh, from uh, the sign-up sheet. In the days. Scissoring jokes, guys. Scissoring, scissoring jokes. jokes. I should have scissored that one out of the, <laughs> out of the rotation. Ooh, I've never seen this name before, and it sounds like a professional wrestler. Put your hands together for Brock Davis, everybody. <laughs> Brock Davis. Hi, guys. So, have you ever get misled because of a movie title? Like, you think it's one thing, it turns out to be something else? 
like the others. Like, for instance, I thought, mm, I don't want to watch a drama about Hispanics right now, but then my friend told me that it was actually a thriller with Nicole Kidman, and she doesn't even sell oranges in it, so it's like false advertising. But, and then there is another movie called The Quiet Ones, and I thought, why would you ever make a comedy about rape victims? But it turns out it's like this evil girl that's like seven and she has evil powers, but she doesn't even get molested in the movie, so I'm like, where's my refund? But, and there's 12 Years a Slave, and I thought that was like a competition show where you win your freedom and $200,000, but it turns out it's this incredible, compelling, like this moving, Definitely the best comedy of the year, and I don't care what any of you think, that Wayne's brother totally deserved that Oscar. So, thanks to you guys, it's Brock. That's exactly a minute. You nailed it, Brock. Um, where are you from? Um, I'm actually adopted, and I think it's from a third world country, so I just call my parents like Brad and Angelina, and they call me, I should have had that abortion, but... What? So, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Los Angeles. But what is, you seem like you have an accent. Yeah. What is it's that? Crazy. Like I said, I don't know. Seriously, my parents have accents. And oh. It's what are your out. parents' accents? It's like Russian. Right. But it's phasing <laughs> out. I don't know. I never asked. You never asked your, yeah. the parents who adopted you what yeah. nationality they are. Yeah. No, wow. It's good to know you guys We're got so close. We're so progressive. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. And you're from LA. <laughs> but you can't, well, how old were you when you left whatever foreign country you left? I don't know. I try to block those memories out. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Interesting. How many times have you been on stage? How, how, how long I don't have you been know, doing like dozens or more. I mean, I wrote. I'm actually like, I go to film school and I like write for scripts of my own stuff. But I then change that material into my sets. And I've been writing these jokes for like years. And then it piled up like dozens of pages. So I said, you know what? I should start using those pages. So I just started doing comedy, but I've been writing my material many years. You've been writing 12 years of slave jokes for years? Yeah, I foresaw that. I foresaw that. I actually watched the whole thing and they actually okay, stole my idea, but I can't prove it, so. <laughs> and in mine, there are actually Wayne's brothers, but, you know, they decided to go with the other way, which is so stupid. Because can you see the potential? Like, white chicks too, 12 years of slave, like, kind of like I have that. a question. Do you know who Dylan Klebold is? No. Okay. Just, just checking. Sorry, was that like that someone that... that from Santa Barbara? <laughs> no, that's the, uh, the Columbine shooter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. I feel <laughs> like he's not like good enough with information to be a school shooter. It's really interesting. Your <laughs> accent is, uh, your accent is overwhelmingly interesting. Like it's, uh... It's, Does it's, that mean, can it, you not... <laughs> it's almost can like... someone voice over you? What? Huh? Do you mean like my voice is shitty or is it no, good it's just, and interesting? It's just, yeah, it's, it's different. different. It's interesting it's different. in the way that it's different. Yes. That's because fine. Is it good different or... It depends on if it's ever found out like what the origins of that accent are. Oh, okay. Are. Then I'm definitely not giving that away. <laughs> yeah, because if they say like, you're if you don't, if, if you think you can <laughs> so just talk... If you're like talk, Armenian, I hate your face. But if you're like from another country that I don't hate, then I'm okay with your accent. Is that... <laughs> No, if you were a Japanese and he sounded like that, there's something completely wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I'm actually Asian, but I had reconstructive eye surgery, so, see, you can't even tell I'm a terrible driver. Oh, I see what you're doing, He's been <laughs> <laughs> No jokes after the minute. Uh, uh, he did that already. He yeah. Doing jokes. Honestly, it, it, like, is your personal life very, are you a dirty person in real life, or are you... Were you baptized in a pond? I mean... <laughs> Like, like, I mean, no, it was actually a sewer, but because you're, you're, you know, your style's very, you know, in your face, you know, yeah. almost abortion. I bet you have a, a bunch of abortion material somewhere just waiting to get out. Yeah. I think he did an I abortion like, joke. Oh, no, he did a rape joke. If I were you, I would dump all the jokes, do a research paper on who you are, and I would just be vulnerable, bro. I, we, like, be, talk, like he said, talk about your voice, it's so unique, or like, if you're adopted and you don't even really know where you're from, like, that's just. I no one ever says joke. that. Like, no one's ever said those things. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I like my jokes just fine. But no, I'm not I saying, do like, that. don't do jokes, but, like, there's so much in who you are that no yeah, one I, else... I know. I, I kind of try to keep that apart from my stage persona, but I get that it's like a, you know... Right. That well, I it's very to... disconnective when somebody uh, comes out and uh, says, you know, just starts going with, like, movie jokes. You know, you basically okay, gave a very... 
Mm-hmm. It's a very you went straight into especially if it's a Nicole Kidman movie, Joe. right? And yeah. some of them I haven't heard of, right? Those are just a little old. So What's I do the quiet one? Working is that on with Nicole Kidman? What? The others is actually a movie that came out. I remember like, the others, but what about a, a quiet one? The quiet one? ones, I think it just came out like two weeks ago or something. It was like a horror movie. Oh. And you can't do Mexican selling oranges jokes. It's yeah, those are Benji's. Updated. It's so overdone. That's so Benji's done. area. Yeah. <laughs> so now you see that I already wrote the material years ago. Um, I guess. I mean, yeah. it was old years ago. It's just... I don't know. Like, now I ne- never... Like went up here before, so when it's the minute, I just choose the material that I can work with. Right, but you don't have any. You don't ever talk about you. You were gonna. You were in these dozens or more of sets that I you've had. I do talk about me, but not to a minute extent. But so. do you talk at all about your voice? No. You got to talk about that voice. Okay, I will talk it's about. It's unbelievable. My voice. It's gonna be the first. <laughs> It was so hard for me to even listen to what you were saying because I was just trying to think of what you sounded like. And I couldn't. With 60 seconds of continuous talking, I still can't put my finger on exactly. I know what it is. What? All right. What's that famous actress that's deaf? Marley Matlin? All right. No, no. In the the future, when there's like a technology to fix her voice, that's what his voice sounds like. There you go. I, I really like, you have these compliments. You're like, oh, you have the voice of an angel that has throat cancer. I'm like, which, no, like, no. is my voice good or Your bad? voice sounds like an effeminate person who was raised at the UN. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. But you got to know that. You got to know that you sound like that. <laughs> like, what's most important isn't that Benji got a laugh. It's that you need to take from this that it's the first thing everybody notices when you no, start listen to Listen to this podcast, and then you'll hear your voice, and you'll or get it. Or just cup your hands like this. You no, you guys, I heard my voice. I'm not happy with the just listen. We're not pod. making fun of you, though. It's Sneak okay. up behind no. people and talk and see what their reaction is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're just messing around. No, I know. I know. Oh, yeah, and especially like when I'm do- doing my sets, I try to sound more juvenile, and that adds to what you were saying. So right, <laughs> just be you, bro. You try to sound more juvenile. What does that mean? Yeah, because you cannot say something offensive and then also sound like oh fuck, whatever religion group this is. Like fuck that person, fuck those that listen. I love that voice fuck those too. People, fuck them. <laughs> No. I think I think your real calling is in voiceover. voiceover yeah. and You'd be a great voiceover guy. <laughs> hey, Rocky, what's coming out of that rock over there? Yeah. <laughs> if I came out like that and if I was like insulting those groups in that voice, wouldn't that be more like offensive? But in a really like what? as if I'm actually trying to You have the voice of someone who just stole my daughter. <laughs> I you actually think you have a you'd daughter? be good at reading, like, reading to me before bed. Because yeah, yeah. you can make yeah. good characters. <laughs> <laughs> good characters. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Can you do anything else with your voice? Is there any impressions that you do or anything I like that? I don't have any impressions, but I can alter it. I mean, I have an old guy joke. Let's which hear is... it. Are you Arnold Schwarzenegger's housekeeper's son? Because <laughs> now the accent makes sense. It's starting to come together. Film student trying to find an outlet for himself. Yeah. Austrian, Mexican. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm like a Benetton commercial. What's your old man impression? Let's hear that. I mean, it's not an impression, but this literally happened. Um, we were showing the campus to a friend of mine's grandfather, and he saw an interracial couple, and he pulled my friend's arm, and he went like, oh, Did you see those abominations? Is that even legal? <laughs> I'm not kidding. And we were like, Oh my God. We can tell. You need to euthanize them right now, but... Brock Davis. You don't have, you're not on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, actually. I forgot to write it, and it's Brock Davis here. Brock Davis Brock is here. here. What a great... See, that's a great idea for a Twitter name. Instead of yeah. these, like, John Smith 075, just John Smith here. Yeah, yeah but it's like Brock with B-R-O-C-K, so they can't still find me because they think, like, it's spelled differently. Brock? Brock Lesnar spelled Brock. You're you're good. It's exactly like that, yeah. but I don't know. Like I tell people, and is that with an X? I'm like, no, it's an B R O C K. I it, don't know. It, this literally happened. I tell my name, and people are like, how do you spell that? Wow, Brock. 
You're hanging out with a lot of stupid people. (laughs) I know. But thank you so much, Brock. Welcome to uh, the stand-up community. (laughs) Dozens and more of spots. He's done. (laughs) Fuck yeah, Brock Davis. That was interesting. Wow. What do you mean my voice is weird? (laughs) It's like uh, unbelievable. Adopted. That's all true, huh? You were adopted. Wow. He should have a cartoon. That would be a good sounding cartoon, and it'd be pretty demented if he stuck to that kind of material. Like, he would have a pretty fucking cool cartoon, though, like Adult Swim. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Talking Bear. That's what I see, too. Yeah, Talking Bear. Jesus, what'd you think of Brock? Sounds like a Russian guy from West Hollywood. That's it does, it. right? <laughs> very much so. It's very much of both. It's almost like Borat and Bruno crossed together for one unfunny movie. With, um, with a little bit of Novocaine injection throughout the gum and tongue area. Yeah, that's true. That's And you were, you're sort of right. It's like a deaf... Uh, but she oh fixed God. her voice with technology. Uh, no, it's good. Next, uh, next comedian. Yeah. Uh, Brock, you write movies? You have a great voice for writing movies. Um, <laughs> that's the line, everybody? Was that too much? <laughs> Guys, your next comedian goes by the name of Matt Nino. Wow, I never get picked for anything. This is so cool. Hi, how are you guys doing? Yeah, Brock, you definitely sound fucking weird, dude. I think maybe the orphanage you say that was maybe all for deaf people. I don't know. Did they mention that? I kind of zoned out there towards the end. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, wow. I just moved here this weekend from Philadelphia. I drove cross country, believe it or not. I did. I, it just got in Saturday. Uh, driving solo sucks. I listened to a lot of music. I smoked a lot of pot. I took an amphetamine. I took several rest stops uh, to do cocaine in the bathroom to keep going. It was awesome, actually, when I think about it. I stopped in Arizona to see this thing called The Thing. It was like all of Arizona on Route 10, whatever. It's like there's nothing but billboards of The Thing. Have you seen this? Anybody makes it? Anybody? You, yeah, you guys have been around. Yeah, The Thing did what? It was just a mummy they found in the Grand Canyon. All right, that's it, really? Wow, that sucked. That's one of the that first. That sucked things. so bad. That's one of the first people to ever do crowd work during his 60 <laughs> seconds. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that before. Matt, I'll tell you what I love about you right away. Is it is the it's exactly what uh, Brock didn't do, and you're talking about like real life stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're being honest. I mean, you admitted to felonies in your 60 <laughs> seconds, like two or three. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's awesome. How long have you been doing stand-up in Philly? Uh, in Philly, oh, I on and off. Actually, this was the first stage I've ever performed on in a, in a comedy club. Actually, I responded. Right now? I, no, no, no. Uh, oh. Like seven years ago. Oh. Uh, yeah, I uh, responded. I think Jerome Cleary and uh, it was like oh, Funny Friday. Oh, hey, well, well, let's just yeah, keep yeah, moving on, yeah. Matt. Uh, <laughs> Um, it took a seven-year break from comedy? No, I, uh, I traveled around a lot. Uh, I kept going back and forth between L.A., Austin, Texas, and Philadelphia. So just kind of like in that, in that general region. Well, you talked about listening to music, right? But you yeah. Didn't, you didn't talk about music. No, no, I didn't talk about music. Then you went into the drugs that you did on your way here. Yeah. And then yeah, you I talked know. about, and this is where things get really interesting. Then you talked about a thing called The Thing, <laughs> in which you only will ever know about, only if you're driving through that one stretch of Arizona, and you have to be driving through it to know about it. So it's yeah. sort of a tough subject to connect with anybody on, because you have to have literally driven over that exact freeway in Arizona to see it. That's why what will end up happening, I bet if you talked about The Thing <laughs> multiple sets in front of different crowds, is you would end up always with one or two or three people that just go, yeah, no, I saw it. <laughs> and then that's it. So you have to really explain it, and it has to be quick and short, or it's might probably not worth it unless it, yeah, it's, you know. it's definitely but not worth stage, it if you don't have something to go to. But your stage presence really gave off a thing where, like, I didn't w- want you to end, kind of, because you were very comfortable on stage, and, I, and it was kind of like, like, all right, what's going to happen, you know? But 
you did just kind of do crowd work, and you didn't really get to anything except talk about the you know stuff. And you if did. you're gonna yeah. bring up fun stuff like meth or you know, you gotta invite us, man. Doing we'll help coke you in restrooms, then you have it to. It was it wasn't officially meth. It was actually like a prescription amphetamine that my oh, friend. Okay, well, let's not rationalize food. what's meth <laughs> and what's not. Uh. I think I like that you did. <laughs> even though like you're not gonna do a bit about the thing on like the Tonight Show, I like that you just kind of kept it loose and just talked about what was on your mind. I think that's like an important Yeah, totally. It's great. Area. And I totally agree with Brian. Your stage presence is amazing. But, yeah. but you want if you're going to mention something, you're going to want to have a point to it. So let's get into a couple questions. Sure. What happened after you took the amphetamine pill on the drive? Oh, what state was I, that in? I took and... I took that from Philadelphia and I drove Oh, you did you didn't even wait. Yeah, you were no, still right. in your hometown of yeah, Philadelphia yeah, no, when you right, well, it. I were you even planning on moving to LA until <laughs> you took the pill? Yeah, no. I uh, it was definitely it was not part of the plan. I traded my friend for weed. He was just like, "Listen, you'd leave me with some weed. I'll give you this amphetamine pill. Help you with the drive." So, Holy shit! Well, the weed I also would have helped you with the drive, but yeah, uh, you no, well, that, more it of that. evens it out. But uh, yeah, no, my friend, he's like, he takes like psychotic drugs. Like, I had to take him in and out of the hospital several times because All right, he has how long so, like, he's the, really good with the pills. Let's stick with this subject. How long <laughs> did the meth last? You took it in Philly. So, <laughs> how long does that? Does that it's, what is uh, that? Like an eight hour? It's, it's it's about it's about thirty hours on the road. Really? Thirty. And you hours. just didn't sleep for thirty hours. You were. Just I took I took like fifteen minute naps here and there. Fifteen minute. Naps. I, where I, I basically just pretend to sleep and vibrate in the back seat and then just go. So again. thirty hours and the meth was worn off. It was. It, I swear it was an amphetamine. Test. It was not methamphetamine. I. And then are you worried about doing both amphetamine <laughs> salts? Or, Adderall, whatever it is. Are you worried about doing <laughs> right. that and cocaine? So after you ate the bath salts. Um, That's no. what it's called, amphetamine salt. You guys, he's like six feet tall. He can do whatever guys, he wants. Guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being pussies. What he the does fuck? look exactly like the white guy who can do as much drugs as he wants to do. And never feel bad after. Yeah, Going across state pretty, lines with cocaine high and high meth. And yeah, I didn't get pulled over once. Well, Just obviously. Cru cruise control at 79, and that's my trick. And you're, oh, wow. When I did swear you start I every time. When did you start doing blow? Uh, when I was 18. No, I meant on the tribe, but that works good. <laughs> Why does it have to be 18? Because it's legal when you're 18. <laughs> the day I turned 18, I went right into that convenience store, and I'm like, give me an eight ball, Habib. See, I threw in Habib oh. just to be a filthy racist. If only. If um, only. I got super nervous. Actually, I just abandoned everything I was going to talk about and just kind of like spaced. But it's also great because the, there's trip. almost something in, you know what I haven't heard is a great, great bit about the drive out here. And you laid out a little storyline thing of how it could be really funny. I mean, especially since the first twist is that we found out you took the meth while in <laughs> Philly, which is amazing. So if you set it up and you said, I drove out here, I ended up doing one, am or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to keep calling it meth, though, because it's so much funnier and more fun. So the fact that you Change set it ass. up like you did meth and then uh, cocaine twice or three times, you know, specify yeah. it. And then say that you did the meth while still in Philly and you would want to, you know, obviously you separated it, right? Or did you do them all in Philly? Like the, well, the, I, I didn't even take the amphetamine. I basically split it in half, crushed it up on a CD case and snorted it. I still have CDs in my car. <laughs> I don't have an aux cord. Wait, what, was the, what, was the, what was the thing you just said about the CD? You I say? crushed up the pill in the CD case and then snorted it because uh -huh. it, it works better. And then like it's time released. You know what I mean? Because it kind of stays no, in No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I do not know what you mean. What CD but was I it? love it. Uh, I think it was uh, Tchaikovsky. No. What? I swear to God. <laughs> That's crazy. Cokeheads you're... love classical music. Why? Yeah. It's all dramatic. You're coked out. This crazy classical shit. You it's great for when you're pretending to sleep. Yeah. What, what state did you start doing blow in? Uh, I also at home, you're doing coke. Yeah, well, I killed the bag that I was going to take with me on the trip with my friends playing pool the night before. They convinced me to drink with them one last night in Philly, you know what I mean? Like, I skipped the open mic I was supposed to say bye to the comics for, and I got drunk so with my home So what state did you start the friends. blow in? Blow-co-ho? Oh, a little bit, little bit at home, and then when I got to Austin, Texas, I read up. I read up. You got re a coke dealer in Austin? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You went really far south to get to Los Angeles. Yeah, it was re yeah, but Austin's like amazing. Where your Coke dealer is. Yeah, the good one. Where the good one is. 
I love Austin, man. <laughs> <laughs> Where the good one is. Oh, yeah. Um, I've got a pot dealer in Austin who's a Death Squad listener. Oh, yeah? Great. I went awesome. and bought pot from him, and I walked in. He's like, I can't believe you're in my house right now. <laughs> it was so cool. That's super cool. He had great weed. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you picked my name out of the hat. This was quite an experience. I'm Thank happy you. I did, too, Matt. You're a super honest, super cool. Well, welcome to the L.A. comedy scene. Have a lot of Thank fun. Thank you very Do as much. many spots as you can and keep it real and just keep trying to... If you mention something, you'll want to get back to it at some point during the opportunity to make a joke about it. Rock you had roll. multiple setups during your 60 seconds, but we didn't really get any punchlines. Okay. So just for future reference, if you say something, if it's met, if it's amphetamine tabs, Meth. whatever, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever you label it as, or cocaine, or as you call it, candy unicorn dust. No, um, but get to get get to punchlines and have fun. All right. Thank See you, you very soon, much. Matt. Come Take back care. again soon. He's on Twitter at Nino Zonin, Matt Nino. You know, an, another big tip is always record your sets. Everybody has your iPhone on you. Mm -hmm. Always record it. Always re-listen to your sets because you might make a little tag that fucking kills. Yeah. And you'll forget about it. And I'll, and I'll one-up that trick by saying I did it for a long time. I recorded every single set until I realized little things like if you if you know the tag immediately after your set that you came up with or the joke or the whatever that you want to go back and listen to from that set so that you don't have to listen to everything else, you can literally type that in as the and as the label of that recording so that you know exactly what you're looking back on. Sometimes, though, lately, I'll just type in, listen, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, if I really kill. Or just, like, maybe a few in my phone is all capital letters, like, fuck yes, exclamation points. Mine will be, like, train crash. <laughs> <laughs> Unusable. Is it an emoticon with a tear? <laughs> um... Fuck yeah. Matt Nino, again, is Nino Zonin, Z-O-N-I-N, N-I-N-O-Z-O-N-I-N. -I -N -I -N -I. All right. Even, even, your, even your Twitter handle sounds like a prescription drug, Matt. Uh, I'm at Nino Zonin, 400 milligrams. Uh, all right. He's also like a caricature for a uh, dude from Philadelphia. That's like what every dude from Philadelphia is. Really? White guy, ready to party. Ears pierced. Yeah, like he's very Philadelphia. Wait, were his ears pierced? Yeah. Ooh, you notice those things. Oh, I check out all tall guys. You do? Yeah. Yeah, you like tall guys. Yeah, they're good hunters. But they can't fit in a bathtub. That's the only problem. I don't want to share my bath. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's the case. Um, should we try to get one more? Yeah, let's do a quick one? last one. This one's going to have to be extra quick, so sorry in advance to whoever it is, but at least we'll get to do something. Joe Bowling, everybody. It's Joe Bowling. Hey, what's up, guys? You ever have a good news, bad news situation where you get some good news and then you get some bad news right after that kind of brings you back down and evens you back out? Uh, a couple months ago... I had a bad news, good news, bad news situation happen to me. Uh, I got some bad news. I got a phone call that said my father had suffered a minor heart attack. And I could tell by your reaction, you guys know that's bad news. <laughs> Nobody wants to get that call, right? Dad had a heart attack. Uh, but the good news is, uh, he's my stepdad. <laughs> so the heart disease wasn't hereditary. <laughs> that had me flying pretty high. That had me feeling really good. That good news brought me right back up. Uh, but guys, then the bad news uh, that brought me back down again um, was that I realized I don't know who my real father is. <laughs> that guy could have died of a heart attack at any point during my 29 years of life. I would have had no idea. Thank you guys very much. It's been Joe Bowling. There you go. 55 seconds of Joe Bowling. I love your name, Joe Bowling. Hey, thanks. Is that your real last name? Real last That's name. so cool. Where are you from? North Carolina. North Carolina. You suck at bowling. No, I'm actually very good. Wow. I was in a, I'm in a league here in LA. I bowled a two thirty six like a couple months Whoa. ago. Whoa. Pickwick, pickwick. Holy shit. You probably got it from the father who abandoned you. They usually get <laughs> bowlers. 
Fuck do you yeah. uh, do the open mic at Meltdown Comics? I do. Because that's where you look like you belong. It's a ni- that's a nice thing. <laughs> Those people are more successful than we are. In some ways, sometimes, once in a while. But what she's saying is you're, you're, you are wearing a t-shirt with a hoodie over it and, and Ray-Ban glasses. So. That's very true. Yes. And you which smile a lot, which I, is very show business savvy. Yeah. It's very good. You're wearing a Navy t-shirt. Were you in the Navy? I was in the Navy. You were? Oh. Yep. The wow. old Navy. What's that? Oh, my God. <laughs> what did he say? He said the old Navy. Oh, my God. Missed it. That's a good one. Brian. Uh, what was that like? Uh, it was pretty crazy. I was on a submarine, actually, so it was very weird. Wow. Yeah. Anything interesting? <laughs> I got some jokes about it, but I mean, like, no jokes after the minute, right? I guess good. so. It's all weird, and it all sounds like a joke. So when, it, was, it was as weird as you think. When you said you're, it was your stepdad, I did, like, the twist, but then you also have the whole thing, like, oh, dude, your stepdad still had a heart, like... I was waiting for you to say, and he molested me. Or something like that, just so I felt better. Stuck with the truth there. <laughs> how, how did it end up? Your Calm. stepdad had a heart attack, and was he uh, okay? He ended up recovering, but then he, like, he tried to eat healthy, I guess. So I found this out from Facebook. He was only my stepdad for, like, a year or two before, like, he right. left. He's, like, a brand-new stepdad. Exactly. Like, I didn't even get used to him before not he even left invested. again. Have you had a lot of stepdads? Uh, no, just the one, actually. This was the first stepdad you've had? Yeah, just the one. That's kind of interesting to have a stepdad later in life. Yeah, I guess so. You took your first step. <laughs> <laughs> Is your mom super hot? My mom's pretty hot. Yeah. Right. She's young, too, so young age. Oh, damn. Uh, it's almost like you're into her. She had me when she was... <laughs> <laughs> From North Carolina, man. <laughs> I'd probably get away Hell with yeah. that. Fuck I'm putting yeah. her back out there, man. She's not dating anybody right now. Wait, how old is she? Uh, she's 16 years older than me. She had me when she was 16. So, wow, uh, that would be pretty crazy. She, if she's she... 45. <laughs> 40, uh, it's a little too yeah. old. I know we just met, but are you a rape baby? What's that? Are you a rape baby, you think? No. I'm just a North Carolina. sleepy small town in North Carolina baby. I mm. wish I had a baby at 16. I'm yeah. jealous. So there's some... She was the cool mom growing up the whole time. Right. She's 16. The guy that was banging her was probably 16. Probably. Which means that your dad's just 16 years older than you. Yeah, it's crazy. You guys yeah. could, like, date the same women. Yeah. You're pretty well-adjusted. We might have. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's doing stand-up. I know, but every time I meet someone with, like, daddy issues, they use it as an excuse to, like, be an asshole. But he seems pretty nice. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know my dad. I'm going to rear-end your car, you know? <laughs> you don't seem like that kind of guy. Nah. Well, fuck yeah. Joe, we're going to move on. Try to because keep we it have quick. To keep All right, it thanks, quick, guys. But thank Good you time. so much. Thank you, Joe. Joe, come back soon. He's so likable. Yeah, very likable, very Super funny guy. Likeable. He's Joe underscore bowling. He's got that name. Imagine all the fucking bowlers that went for that. Like, I'm just good old Joe bowling. You know me. You know me. I just love bowling, and I'm your average Joe, so that's what my Twitter handle's going to be. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Who's this guy that's actually Joe bowling? This is the part of the show, guys, where we have our two awesome regulars come on. They've been doing a new minute each week since the inception of the show, so it's so much fun to watch them grow and do something different uh, each week. Uh, the person going first uh, today, a uh, college dropout from the University of Florida. She did her first spot on Kill Tony, dropped out of college, has been, has been doing a minute uh, ever, ever since, and she's celebrating one year, her stand-up comedy anniversary. Uh, so here she is, everybody. It's the one and only Kimberly Congdon. Hey guys, uh, I want to take you back a little bit. Uh, you know, back in the day, elementary school. Do you guys remember uh, when you were out on the playground during winter? You know, all your friends were bundled up. You we were all out playing, and there was always that one kid that came running up with the jean shorts. Like, dead of winter. Always wore the shorts. And he always smelled like a little bit like piss. You know that kid, right? Um, and you'd argue with him. You'd be like, dude, you've got to be cold. And he'd be like, I'm not cold. And you could tell the kid was clearly cold. And you'd be like, dude, you're cold. I'm not cold. But honestly, I think his mom was just an alcoholic. Was that the situation? Like, your mom just likes to drink a lot. Uh, I don't think she knows that it's winter out. But those moms were pretty cool when you got older, right? Because they're the ones that bought you alcohol and fucked your friends. That's, um, okay. Uh, feminists are ruining everything. Because like, he doesn't like to get smacked on. 
<laughs> well, well, here's the thing: <laughs> is that you ma- you started off by making it, a, you set it up like it was going to be the most relatable thing ever. I'm going to take you guys back. <laughs> like when a DJ says, "Let's go back one time right now," they're about to play a hit right. from the '70s or the '80s or the '90s or whatever. Like when you take somebody back, you went to school with. A kid that wore jean shorts, smelled like piss, in the cold. But that's your specific story. Like you're not taking us back to that guy. Did everyone have that, like that one friend whose mom was clearly an? Taking you back one time. It's a 95.5 KLOS. A little smoke on the water. Only on Kill Tony number 53. That's right. Giveaway at 8 o'clock. You must be 18 or. Yeah, I think we owned, we had somebody that, that, that had shorts on, you know, that always wore shorts when it was cold. And But I don't think he, like, smelled like million and <laughs> Million dollar question. It was, like, Here it is. like, Jayco shorts, and he, like... Was he fat, a little bit chubby? No, he was always extra skinny and malnourished. It was, like, the same kid <laughs> everywhere. What kind of neighborhood so his mom was probably an, ac- an alcoholic. Like, it's probably just true. I know. That's, That's what it seemed like, it. sort of, the whole time. Maybe the premise is... The mother more, you know, the neglected kid opposed to sh- revealing that he has a bad mom. You start with that, like the kid who had the bad mom. Talking about how when you have, like yeah. when you sit at the end. Okay, when you have a bad beginning. mom, they're cool when you're older, but not so cool when you're young and you're wearing short, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I like that when you're a teenager, then you want to like hang out with that kid's mom. Yeah, she was a cool mom in high school. He's all trying She's to trade lunch mom. stuff because his lunch sucks because his mom's a bad mom. Yeah. He always had the terrible lunch, just two pieces of bread. Yeah. Nothing Is that true? Mind. Yeah. He's trying to come trade on. You. This I, piss I, covered I, jean short wearing kid no, would open up it. a brown bag and pull out only two pieces of bread. There's definitely that kid in every school. How do you know that? Have you researched not. it? I feel like I saw at least, like, it at least? In my school. The only There's s- always like shitty Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Florida. And we have another winner. That's what I'm trying Guys, I'm going to take you back. Haven't you ever been there hanging out at school and all of a sudden a sinkhole opens up and the devil crawls out and is like, I hate your state and everything about it. Come on, guys, right? Yeah, yeah just open up with, I grew up in Florida. Yeah, talk yeah. about Florida. And the trash I've seen. That's yeah. exactly it. I knew a girl that did a porn with her mom. <laughs> they all want her number. Wow. Gross, girl that right? did that way. But yeah, talk about growing up in Florida and yeah. trashy kids trying to get in on your fucking shit. And you didn't grow up like trash. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's totally the setup. And it's only four seconds, so yeah. it's pretty easy. I grew up in Florida. Oh, the trash I've seen. <laughs> yeah. And then you're in. Like yeah. this one kid that wore jean shorts. And then it's like more we're finding out about some instead of like, wait, I didn't go to kid. I didn't go to school with some kid with jean shorts that smelled like piss. His lunch is a Lunchables filled with stuff that doesn't belong in a Lunchables. <laughs> It's just, it's just the plastic bread. Yeah. Right. With like weird stuff in it. Like a pinto bean. and Yeah. <laughs> just a, a, a couplet of mayonnaise for no reason. Yeah, all the free a stuff couplet. you get at AMPM is what his Lunchable is made up of. Benji, we call it Ampum. Yeah, we call AMPM Ampum. That's a local joke, guys. Oh, a little inside joke from Esther. Squeezing it in there. Kim, thank you hey, so much. That's thank you. Kim, Kimberly Congdon on Twitter. <laughs> Working it out. Yeah. One year. What a cutie pie. She looks Israeli to me sometimes. Yeah, are, what are you, Kim? I'm Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican and Irish. Oh. When she doesn't smile, she looks Israeli, right? She, she, has a, uh, she has a Middle Eastern slouch face and a Latina smile. <laughs> I'm a happy Latina girl. Get out of my way. Um... Our other regular is uh, super goofy, always just taking a little something and turning it into a lot more than what it is. Who knows what the topic's going to be this week. Maybe it's another food. Maybe it's something that you see once in a while when you're doing something. It's always goofy. It's always fun. It's Sarah Weinshank, everybody. When I was little, my best friend's mom used to make a lot of stuff in a crock pot. Crock pots are so shady. There's nothing shadier than a crock pot. How lazy do you have to be to just use a slow cooker? It's empty out your pantry. What am I gonna make tonight? I don't know. 
Got some kidney beans, let's throw that in there. Got some maple syrup, let's throw that in there. Got some old frozen carrots, let's throw that in there. You walk in, what are you making? I don't know. If it's thin, it's a soup. If it's thick, it's a stew. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Husband comes home. What have you been doing? Slaving away all day <laughs> over the stove, over my crock pot. <laughs> really, she's just watching old episodes of Dr. Oz. All right. <laughs> There's real gold in there, yeah. and I can almost clearly see, it's a fun one for me, because I can almost clearly see exactly where the surgery needs to take place. You don't need to mention the exact ingredients, you just okay. say, you throw things in the thing, the way that you say it, and the way that you set it up, and um, you, uh, you say the soup and stew part, but we just don't need the ingredients. Again, it's almost like the theme of the night is, anytime information is given, it should have, most of the time, a reason why. You know, now I'm looking for what's beans and carrots mixed with, you know, it's like, but it's too much math, and you don't need the math, because what's funny about it isn't about the math. It's not about what you're making. But the soup and the stew part will stick no matter what. Like, if, if I take it off early, or if it's, whatever, however you said that part's great. And then the funniest part, which you'll be into it in 15 seconds now, is the... I've been slaving away over the crock pot. You said I, I've been sta slaving away over the stove, the oh, crock pot. Yeah, like you right. said that first, which it's like, then what? You're making side dishes on the stove, and that's not part it's of the joke much. either. Yeah. Just keep it on the crock pot. It's like <laughs> slaving away at this crock pot. You know, I mean, it's it's horrendous. Oh man, I watched six episodes of House, and uh, you know, whatever. Like you just fill it in with how not hard it is to put something on a slow cooker. Right. Like, <laughs> like, like, like it's a slow cooker, yeah. you know? Pretty much like the person that's using the <laughs> slow cooker because there's not much going on. Oh, the, what's the hardest part? Putting on the lid? Just stirring it. <laughs> I don't even stir. think I don't even know if that's part of a slow cooker thing. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. if you're supposed you got, to you stir. stir. Yeah, you oh, stir. you do? Yeah. Every hour. That What's hour. that? What's that point mean, Kim? What is that? Is it funny that I don't know that you're supposed to stir? I was laughing at Brian. He's like, yeah, you definitely have to stir. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, remember, like, what are you, the crock pot? I grew up with all women. I know all this shit. Remember the remember the pot that's on the oven that used to have like that robot women. thing that would come up and go and like start whistling? No, what? <laughs> I, I think that was a nightmare you had. I, I love how you said the reason why you know the crock pot is because you've grown up around all women. I did. Like it's like that's so sexist. Like of course I know how to sweep the floor. I grew up around all <laughs> women. I know how to take a punch, guys. That's all I'm saying. I think what everybody really wants to know is, Sarah, were you baptized in a church or a pond? Um, <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. That's our time. That's a great new. That's right in her alley. That's yeah. a whole new thing. And, and, and end it with the Dr. Oz, old episodes of Dr. Oz, because it's like medical advice that doesn't even make sense right. anymore. <laughs> That's like hilarious. metabolism. It yeah. does feel like that's <laughs> you know what you what would mean? watch while watching, while yeah. Uh, making, yeah. Like, don't eat kit. No, that's too new. Uh, well, it's like weird, like supplements that like people don't know about. Yeah, like, like, like I bet like half the people that watch Dr. Oz have something in the crock pot <laughs> when they're <laughs> yeah. watching it. And Hannah Nicole Smith is here with her brand new, completely safe trim spa yeah. diet pill that doesn't kill anybody. Sarah, Jesus. thank you so much. She's Princess Shank on Twitter. That's the end of the episode. What do you guys have coming up? Benji Aflalo is on Twitter. One of the smartest writers in anywhere. This is truly, he's a monster, people. This is one of those people that is totally going to make something. And you're going to say, hey, I think I saw him uh, on a, some panel show where they just kept talking about baptizing over and over again. So I'm so glad to have you on. You're so funny. Thanks, Tony. That's really nice. I just wrote on the guy's choice award, so I guess watch that. Yeah. Did that come? That already came out. <laughs> no, it's gonna be in like oh. a week or so. Oh, okay, cool. Esther. Oh, June 4th, I'll be in Braille with Chris Kattan. <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. Fuck yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be on this season of TNT. What? Yeah. Central, and did Twitter. you fuck any of them? I definitely didn't. Uh, fuck yeah. That's uh, crazy. Did, you, did you black out? I didn't black out. <laughs> I didn't have sex with them. The key is guilt joke. They sis kebab you? All right. <laughs>
the <laughs> Little Esther on Twitter, always fun. It was so good to get to work with you again. It's like the first time we've done something productive in about five years, so uh, it's exciting. Um, Thanks for having me. Guys, check out my tour dates at TonyHinchcliffe.com. There's a lot of them coming up. Kevin Lee Light, Jesus Christ in the house on Twitter at Kevin Lee Light. Thank you so much, live audience. You guys are the best. Listeners, thank you. Comic-Con. Comic-Con 2014. See you.